Today we're going to review decimals and fractions for comparison. So what I mean, we're going to look at less than, um, greater than, and just see how would we compare different types of numbers. So things I want you to think about when you're comparing values is make sure you know what the symbols are. So if there's a symbol that you're not familiar with, you should ask for help or you should um, do a little internet search to figure out what that symbol means. You should simplify values first. So if there's an addition or a subtraction, maybe some multiplication or division, make sure you do that before you try to decide how values are related. And a lot of times it'll be easier if you change both the values to decimals because I think we think about decimals easier because we're used to dealing with money, right? And so that part of just understanding decimals will help if they're all in the same unit. So if you have a fraction and that fraction doesn't make sense to you, switch it over to a decimal and I think the comparison will be easier for you to understand. So let's try something. Let's start with um, maybe a symbol that you're not overly familiar with because we don't use it in day-to-day -day life and it's called absolute value. Just looks like bars on the outside of a number and it really stands for the distance something is from zero. Generally we don't say distance is positive, positive or negative like the example I always give is like driving to work. When you drive to work say you drive five miles to work you don't say I drive a positive five miles or you don't say I drive a negative five miles you just say you drive five miles. So we don't assign values um, to a number as negative when we're looking at absolute value, we want to say that this number is always greater than or equal to zero. So a few examples just to make sure we understand. The absolute value of negative 2 is just 2. I drop the negative. The absolute value of 1.7 is just 1.7. If an operation is inside the absolute value, so here I have the absolute value of 4 minus 9, I first want to simplify. So 4 minus 9 would give me negative 5 but because it's an absolute value, I know the answer is just five. What I want you to see there is I didn't go absolute value of four and then subtract absolute value of nine. I treat the absolute value like a parenthesis and I do what's inside first. So let's try this. Let's fill in the blank with either greater than or less than. And I've given you the absolute value of negative seven and the absolute value of negative three. First thing I wanna do is simplify. So I want to say the absolute value of negative 7 is 7, and the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. Now I have these two numbers, and I can tell that, yeah, 7 is greater than 3, so I can fill in the blank. Great. Let's review repeating decimals. So our repeating decimal, the symbol we use, is a bar over the number. So you can say I have point x with a bar, which just means it's really equal to x, 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 x. It goes on forever, but we didn't want to have to write it. <clears throat> If there's more than one thing that repeats, like I put point x, y with the bar on top, means it's x point x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y forever. So just a simpler way to say that something is repeating. Again, let's fill in some blanks with less than or greater than. So the first one I have is 0.4 and 0.44. So no bar yet because I want to say, let's deal with stuff we know. Well, think of it was money. 0.4 would be 40 cent and 0.44 would be 44 cent. And we think, well, which one's more? The 4.4 is bigger, right? It's more money. It has more value. It has more decimal places. Let's try again. I have 1.22 versus 1.222. In the same idea, I have more stuff on the 1.222. So the um, 1.22 is less than 1.222. So easy comparison, just saying if it has more decimal places, then it's right more value. Let's go back then and put that repeating decimal in. So I have 0.5 with a bar versus 0.5 without a bar. I'm going to simplify it first and say, well, what does that say? The bar means, oh, I have a bunch of fives, right? So if I see that bunch of fives, I can see that value is bigger than 0.5. So I know that's greater. One more time, I have 2.06 versus 2.06 with a bar over it. And again, just so we're clear about what's happening, I just translated that 0.6 or the 6 with a bar to a bunch of 6s, which tells me 2.06 is less than 2.06 with the bar on it. So making little, just little notes to yourself is really helpful when you're trying to do comparisons. All right, let's talk about fractions. <clears throat> So here, again, I just want to fill in greater than or less than, and I have a fraction, 7 over 4, and then I have a decimal, 1.6. So what I think to do is I think, let's grab a calculator. Like, let's not try to do this on our own. So if I put this in a calculator, I get 7 over 4 is 1.75. 
Now I can see the relationship. I can see 0.75, yeah, that's bigger than 0.6, so I know to put greater than um, in, in that blank. Well, what if we have some operations first, right? So I have 9 over 40 plus 2 over 5, and I'm trying to compare that to 3 over 5 times 5 over 2. This has gotten a lot bigger, and so I think, again, let's go to the calculator and let's simplify that before we try to make this comparison. So I'm going to go over to a calculator, Desmos. Desmos, I'm going to go to the Desmos Scientific Calculator. Desmos has a lot of different calculators, but Scientific is going to be the one I want to use right now. Okay, so in De Desmos Scientific, I can type in 9 divided by 40 and see how it became a fraction. I'm going to hit the arrow over so it tells it I'm not the denominator anymore, and I'm going to say plus 2 divided by 5, and it made that other fraction, and it says that's equal to 0.625. So that's one of my values. That's the first one that we need. Um, I'm going to hit enter so I can get a new one, and then we're going to do 3 divided by 5, and again, I hit this arrow over to say I'm done with my fraction, and I want to multiply that by 5 divided by 2. Okay, and it tells me that's 1.5. So I've taken the two fractions with the operations, I converted them into decimals, so now let's go back and do our comparison. All right, so what do we have now? We have that 9 over 40 plus 2 over 5, that was 0.65, and we have 3 over 5 times 5 over 2 was 1.5. Now we can see 1.5 is bigger, so we're going to say 0.65 is less than 1.5. Okay, let's try again. Here I have 6 over 5 divided by 1 over 3, and I'm trying to compare that to 11 over 8. Um, I'm showing you down here, I did the same thing in Desmos. I put 6 over 5 divided by 1 over 3, and I let it do the um, simplification for me to get to 3.6. And then I did 11 over 8, and it came out to 1.375. We can see 3 is bigger than 1. So I can say 3.6 is greater than 1.375. So we're using all of those things I talked about, right? We said if there's an operation, let's go ahead and do it. If, if we can write as a decimal, let's do that because we're better at decimals. And then we're able to make that comparison like as our last step. So all those things really go together to help us figure out how numbers are related.